why am I telling you? You guys already know this. Um, she's Floor, they're Nightwish, and we're just in love with every single one of them. Welcome back and thank you for joining me for another reaction video. If you are new here, welcome to the channel. Glad to have you with us and I hope you enjoy this one. Also, if you are new, please don't forget to subscribe, turn on those notifications and you're good to go. You won't miss a single one of these when they go live. Now, of course, it is Nightwish Saturday, which means we're going to continue progressing our way through the Human Nature album and we're on to a song called Shoemaker. Now, here's another reason I love you guys. With you knowing I was going to do this reaction today, you sent me a bunch of tweets and messages and comments letting me know that there's a deeper meaning to the song. So I need to do a bit of research. I need to kind of dig up the meaning and just read through some information beforehand, which I went and did. And here's what I found out. The song was actually written about a man named Eugene Mills Shoemaker, who was born on the 28th of April, 1928. He was an American geologist and he was one of the founders of the field of planetary science. That kind of makes sense. Thomas is very interested in all things evolution, history, um, geology, the universe. So that definitely lines up with that kind of thought process. He um, actually co-discovered Comet Shoemaker Levy 9 or Levy 9 with his wife Carolyn uh, and someone else named David H. Levy or David H. Levy. Uh, the comet hit Jupiter in 1994 and the impact was televised around the world. I don't remember that, but I'm definitely going to go and see if I can find some news stories on that after this. Um, he studied terrestrial craters. He was the first director of the United States Geological Survey's Astrology Research Program, which is a very long title for a very important man. We know this by now. Um, and unfortunately, he was killed in a car accident while visiting an impact crater site in Australia. Um, but here's the really interesting and fascinating part. Apparently after his death, some of his ashes were carried to the moon with the Lunar Perspective mission. And that is very, very cool. Um, it's so important for me to get this kind of information before songs like this. So thank you very much once again. And I'll tell you why. It's not just about the lyrics and, and kind of picking up on the actual words that are spoken or written about this man. But sometimes there's a particular emotion conveyed through the music. And this is really helpful to know there's a deeper meaning and that you need to pay it a greater level of respect. So I really appreciate that. And I can't wait to get stuck in. Let's get back to the reaction. Right, I'm ready to go. I got the video ready. I got the lyrics up and I can't wait to get stuck into this one. Saturdays will always have a special place in my heart because I get to put out my Nightwish reaction as a premiere. Jump in the live chat with you guys and today is no different. So Nightwish Shoemaker, let's see what you got. Okay, it wouldn't be a Chase Nightwish reaction if I didn't stop it within a minute, go back to the beginning and say that was awesome, let's hear it again. I'll tell you why I'm doing that. They are the masters of introducing a certain melody before it evolves and becomes something bigger, before it evolves into something more important in the song. And that's really important for me because the human brain is a funny thing. Anytime it can familiarize itself with something and get comfortable, it makes that journey a little easier. And music is no different. Uh, started out with that kind of music box, playful, mischievous, but definitely had like a serious undertone to it. Um, keys came in, there was a bit of synth in the back. And then when it came in with her vocals and kind of the full band and a lot of that busyness, um, I love the palm and the double kick work in little segments there, but that's not an easy melody, I'm sure, to sing, to play, but it's not easy to listen to. And anytime you get that introduction, which allows your brain to kind of process it in some capacity before um, it comes in with the full kind of front of the music, that's really helpful. Um, it's very thoughtful and they are very smart, but we know this.
Oh, this is so cool. Um, I just realized something else they're doing, which I find really interesting, but I want to talk about the lyrics as well. I love how it started out with the kind of universe um, visual. And then it said, um, and obviously then looking at the moon and it says, you've been, uh, now you've been tucked in for eternal earth, rise and wonder. I love that. Um, yours is the whole graveyard of heavens. It's such a beautiful kind of ode and tribute to, to, to Eugene. I think this is really cool and really smart. What I love musically that they're doing with this beginning piece and this awesome kind of tricky melody is the music and the vocals are alternating in busyness. So when she starts out and she's kind of fluxing up and down with the with the words, the music's quite simple underneath. The chords are ringing out. But the minute it goes into that double kick kind of palm muted piece, then her vocals calm down. So it's alternating the busyness between the two. And you're getting that constant energy and constant pace, but it's not overloading you in terms of um not being able to listen and appreciate all of the elements on their own. That's cool. Um, who is that? Is that Troy? I know um, you guys have said on a lot of the these newer reactions um, to human nature that uh, to almost challenge them to kind of all sing in, in, in all of the choruses of the songs, if you will. So uh, that that sounded, it could be Marco, but it definitely sounded a little different. So it may have been Troy, but I love how the male voice became the dominant and um, Floor kind of sang that harmony a little bit higher but she sat back and that's down to like some kind of really nice recording techniques and just playing with that volume and getting it dead right but it's such a pleasant um change in the song because obviously she's going to be the main vocal for the majority but it's nice to switch it up like that really cool So symphonic metal is an interesting genre and there's a couple cool things that I have learned on this journey with you guys because it's obviously something I'm still fairly new to. But there is a, a fair amount of aggression in the music. If you think about those double kick notes, that palm muting, that is your typical metal aggression. But when you add the synth and the choir elements um, and the keys on top, all of that symphonic, you know, trademark if you will what it does is you don't lose the aggression but it takes the edge off it makes it palatable it makes it um i don't want to say softer but it makes it makes it seem less less harsh and i think that that is really important because when it comes to symphonic metal i'm realizing how important and i have realized how important the vocals are and the storytelling is so if you take away some of that harshness you keep the power you're able to get those vocals across in a more um easy to hear way for the listener and I think that's really important if they're putting so much thought into the concept of the song and the lyrics then that's what you want have a listen out for that palm muting and the kick um, and just imagine that without the synth on top to take that edge off it would be really aggressive and I think that has a moment to shine in the song but not when the vocals are being the priority uh, not when they are trying to tell a story That key work wasn't there before, this is awesome.
this is awesome. I didn't know um, that they were going to break into this. This doesn't feel like a typical structure of a, a, a Nightwish song. In fact, it doesn't feel like a typical structure of any song. It has a, I haven't heard what I can identify as a distinguishable chorus, short of saying that that softer piece where the male vocal becomes the primary sound. Um, but that's not the chorus. That's something else. This doesn't seem to be following your typical structure, which I kind of like. I think uh, I'm obsessed with structure and melodies. You guys know that by now. And I, I love when they kind of challenge the normal, challenge the thinking on that. So this is right up my alley. Um, this piece that came in, it's really nice and heavy. That drum beat just kind of rocking through and providing that steady, 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 but heavy um, rhythm for everyone to kind of sit on top of. And uh, there's this kind of, it sounds like a lead guitar, but it almost gives the effect of a siren. And it's just like, ringing out and getting louder and louder and louder i'll go back again just another piece because i want to and because i want to hear it but it's really nice to see the introduction of it come in sounds like a siren sounds like a an alert almost it's very cool There's definitely multiple vocal layers there, but that choir effect behind it is so powerful. It just enhances it and gives it like extra depth. Um, this this is not easy to sing. This this is this would be a very difficult song to sing live, which makes me want to see it live even more. I just heard some real high vocals coming in, but I wanted to pause it there because um, what a beautiful, like emotional part of the song it is. It, it has a deeper meaning. It is in some ways a tribute to someone very important and influential in Thomas's life. So um, to have that little segment where they can kind of portray that emotion with that quote was really awesome. I liked it, but I also liked what the music was doing in the background. I didn't, it's not just about the words on the screen. Um, it's, he's got this kind of mentality that a lot of, uh, film score writers have where they are able to just understand the dynamic and the importance that certain it's not certain instruments but certain melodies and functions of instruments play to convey an emotion he's just he's got such a great understanding of that and he knows exactly how to make the listener feel something immediately when this came up even if you didn't know what, what, the, what the song was about you would start to feel something it feels deep it feels heavy it feels full with emotion I just said this song was going to be really hard to sing live. And that was before I heard this. I don't know. I mean, I know she can do it. I know she's going to do it, but it is going to be a vocal challenge, which makes me think about placements. And um, when they play this album live, eventually, um, where are they going to play it through in the concept that it was written? Or are they going to mix it up with all the songs? Live concerts are a little bit different. They have certain time periods that they're allowed to play. So it's kind of where they're going to place this in there to kind of preserve your vocals, to make sure that she can nail this. Not that I'm, not that she's going to have any problem, to be honest.
That's really cool. I'm going back. I know it's towards the end of the song and apologies for that. But when that percussion comes in, listen to how the, uh, it sounds like strings on top, how the strings start to echo the percussion, but towards the second half of its kind of cycle. And then it continues almost as an echo. It, it, it almost feels like the percussion is um, kickstarting the string section, but it's, there's a delay to it so that it kind of echoes off. And that I really like that. I think that's really smart because it's a way to get two instruments that tone doesn't actually fit together, but to get them to interact in a way that's quite smart and nice to listen to. Um, that's powerful. Actually, I don't know what those last words were at the end. So let me Google that and figure it out. Okay. So I looked it up and I'm going to butcher this apologies, but Laudato is Latin and it means praised. And then ad Astra, the meaning of that is through hardships to the stars. Oh, wow. It's just, they're so thoughtful in their approach to the concepts. I actually got goosebumps when I read that. They just care so much about what they're doing. It's not just about the music, just about the story, just about the vocals. They put it together in this beautiful package for us all that we can appreciate kind of the effort that goes into it. But you know this, why am I telling you? You guys already know this. Um, she's Floor, they're Nightwish, and we're just in love with every single one of them. They are remarkable musicians. Um, great minds, really smart people. And you can hear that intellect in the music. And this one did not follow a normal structure by any means. I said that earlier on, but it was further emphasized when it changed up there at the end. Um, the first two tracks I did felt like songs. They felt like they had certain distinct pieces to it, verses, choruses, bridges. This felt like they just made it up and they, they kind of, they did their own thing. And I really like that. I like when they challenged the norm. So that was awesome another Nightwish Saturday in the books. And I kind of get sad because I enjoy doing these so much, but um, we're going to keep working our way through the album. And we may even throw in a few uh, surprises of the older stuff that I haven't gone through yet as well. So keep supporting. I really appreciate your time. We're all going to have a damn good day. That's my merch. You can find a link to that in the description of this video. Also, there's a store on my YouTube page if you want to look at that. Um, I appreciate everyone who sent me messages saying they bought some merch and it's on the way. I can't wait to see those photos. So please send photos, guys. It's going to be awesome. And um, yeah, I appreciate you all. You make me very happy and um, I love the community we're building. Please keep checking in on each other, making sure we're all okay. It's tough times, but we got this. And um, until the next one, please be safe, be nice to each other and have a damn good day. Yeah.